Hello and welcome to uh, this evening's lecture. Sorry for the delay, we had a little technical glitch there, but it's all under control now. I um, <coughs> want to welcome all of you here for this evening for the first uh, block lecture, lecture this, this season. Uh, before I turn this over to Anthony, I'd like to remind or tell everyone here about an event next month. On June 20th at 1 o'clock, we will be opening the uh, James Randolph collection. We have a number of dignitaries come in and speak about his, their time with him and just share some memories uh, of Jennings and, and his career helping West Virginia and in public service. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Anthony. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Chuck. And, uh, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for coming this evening. I'm overjoyed to have as our guest, Ms. Anna Gilmer, because we all know her, uh, our first annual Block Speaker Series beginning tonight. We have three other uh, programs that are planned. Oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the next month, the last Thursday of June, a gentleman from Morgantown is Ed Hargrove. He's the son of the Tuskegee Airmen. He'll be here talking about his life. Uh, also, we have guests. will be the last Thursday in July and the last Thursday in August. I hope to see you on all three of those other occasions. I'm very, very excited about Ms. Gilmer being a part of our program. Even more so, the book that she co-wrote with Mr. James Randall. It has been reprinted, and we have copies available. If you'll pass the word on to your friends, church members, for $20, dollars you can have a copy this evening. If you'd like to call me or anyone who is with the organization that you know, let them know you'd like to get a copy of the book. Again, it's $25, and I'm very happy that 15 years later, from the getting permission slips to pass to Ms. Gilmer and Mr. Randall's family. 15 years later, we had have, we have Ms. Gilmer here talking about her book and her life. Her daughter, Vicki, will begin the introduction of her wonderful mother and my dear friend, Ms. Anna, Anna Gilmer. Thanks very much. Good evening. Mm -hmm. I'm Vicki Gilmer Bays. I'm uh, Anna Gilmer's oldest daughter and uh, one of her biggest fans as well as one of her uh, tireless assistants. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you can bear with us this evening. Uh, if we have a little difficulty we're going to work right through it and go on with the program. Anna Evans Gilmer. Charleston, West Virginia native, Anna Evans Gilmer is a historian by avocation. She's been documenting histories for her family, church, community, and state for over 40 years. Her many hats also include mentor, friend, role model, teacher, student, author, singer soloist, as well as being the first lady of the First Missionary Baptist Church of Vandalia for over 40 years. Early in life, she learned the pen was mightier than the sword. From 1967 until 1973, she was the first black female to teach at Sissonville Senior High School, which at that time only had one black student. Her passion for recording history began when compiling a 132-page family photographic history booklet, beginning with the first decade of the 1900s. She did this to share her mother's family photograph collection with extended family. Some photographs in the compilation were selected for black history exhibits at the West Virginia Cultural Center and at a national exhibit at the Heritage of Sandwich Plantation in Massachusetts. Later, the West Virginia Division of Cultural and History designated a permanent spot on the state's website for some of her photos. She was an advisor in the preservation of the historic African Zion Baptist Church in Malden. 
She researched and wrote some of the entries in the West Virginia Women's Commission 2002 book called A Sampling of West Virginia African American Women of Distinction. Her news stories were featured in the West Virginia Beacon Digest for over 25 years. In 1989, she located and contributed more than 110 photographs to the 250-page Garnet High School Pictorial History Yearbook called The Way We Were. Mrs. Gilmer and the late photographer James Randall also co-authored Black Pass, a pictorial history of local businesses, churches, organizations, and schools. We happen to have reprints of that available today. This is uh, the book she wrote with Mr. Randall, and it is very good to record the history of, especially, Kanawha County. I present to you and introduce to others my mother, my hero, Mrs. Anna Evans Gilmer. The title is A Doll. A dress, a kiss. <clears throat> Mother told me I was the most difficult toddler of her eight children. Then she mentioned the time I tried to climb up a tall standing cupboard full of dishes, all of which fell over on me. <clears throat> Since I don't remember ever getting a spanking, she must have been so frightened that she gave me a memorable punishment that inspired me to toe the mark. From then on, <clears throat> my own earliest memory involves dolls, doll babies, that my sister Gertrude and I received for Christmas one year. <clears throat> Another year we received nice dresses. Mine was a mint green and hers was light blue. I see us standing out in the driveway beside the blue DeSoto, wearing the dresses and ready to travel with Dad on his regular vacation to Saginaw, Michigan, his hometown. <clears throat> it is a vivid memory because that was the first and only time I saw my parents kiss. He kissed her goodbye because she could not go with us. Probably she was pregnant <clears throat> or had a new baby. My, my sister must have been about six and I would have been four. We climbed on the running board and into the car. I think my sister and I were aged six and four. I could not even guess how old I was on the first trip, but I do remember how excited I was when the mountains disappeared in Ohio. I also learned that there was a different kind of life up north. Our cousins took us over to their public swimming <coughs> pool and showed us that they could swim. <clears throat> um, our, only, our only opportunity was in the dangerous river back home, and we were not allowed near the river. We noticed that there was a difference in the way they pronounced the letter L. They laughed at us for saying y'all. They thought it was okay to say yuns. <laughs> It was a good learning experience. <clears throat> I was lucky enough to be part of the first kindergarten in our local schools. A distinct mental picture of me, a distinct mental picture of me in kindergarten has me playing the little triangle in the band. The bank uniform <clears throat> was a medium blue satin pleated skirt and a jacket trimmed in orange piping. Mother kept the uniform for years and it doubled as a Halloween costume <clears throat> for my younger sister Margaret. Learning to read in the first grade was an exciting experience that gave me the background to sail through the lower grades. <clears throat> a couple of negatives crossed my mind. In the fifth grade, the teacher spanked me in front of the class for chewing gum. She said she tried to give me the eye. The only thing that hurt me was my feelings. <clears throat> I could not believe I had been careless enough to leave some gum in my mouth. 
I was beyond embarrassment <clears throat> in fifth grade when the teacher played an opening bar of a song and some of the classmates could tell the song because they took piano lessons. My dad played the piano and the violin, <clears throat> but his job took up so much of his time. I guess he did not have time to or energy after leaving home to serve breakfast at the, <clears throat> at the uh, hotel at 7 a.m. He was home <clears throat> to rest at 2 p.m., but had to return to serve supper and get back home at 9 p.m. Over the years, though, he played the violin with the radio. I could not understand how he could do that with songs he never heard. I really loved to hear him play. Looking back, I think that was the beginning of my love of so many types of music. <clears throat> there was nothing dead about our dead end street, which led to the local football and track stadium lately field <clears throat> just a block away. In the late summer and early fall, our big front porch became bleachers for watching bands marching in their colorful uniforms. The drum major twil twirling as he led. Traditional classical marches of John Philip Sousa stirred the hearts of children and played the in their own yard, who played in their own yard most of the time and did not care that we were seeing the end of the parade that had marched through the streets of Charleston. The floats were spectacular to see <clears throat> to us. Accompanying the parade were well-dressed fans heading for the game in their fur coats, stylish hats and gloves. The big games such as Washington and Lee and West Virginia were the most excitement our family had all year. Sometimes I think I smell the popcorn and hot dogs from the concession stands. After the parade, <clears throat> those of us who were old enough <clears throat> to stumble over the hillside behind the stadium to see the game in what we called Hoover's Stadium I don't know what the name meant. A few years ago, I saw an old photo from our <coughs> newspaper of an event at the stadium. <coughs> President Herbert Hoover was the distinguished guest for the event. I had begun to theorize that he was somehow connected with the naming by the neighborhood of the three bleachers on the hill behind the stadium. My mother insisted on a regular routine. It's called structure today, as in what's missing in so many young lives, that some prison inmates are fascinated with jail. The lack of structure in their home lives. Our mother was a full-time homemaker who expected a lot from us and herself. Everybody helped with the housework. On Monday, my sister Tittle arose early to help with the laundry. On Tuesday, I arose about 4 a.m. in the summertime before it got too hot to iron. Wednesday was mending and sewing day. She darned socks and cut out coats for the little ones from an old coat that was faded and worn on the top side, but looked fine, new on the inside. Inside out, it was a brand new coat. In retrospect, I see my mother as the recycling queen. Thursday was baking day, and Friday started the cleaning that lasted into Saturday. On Sunday, it was understood that all children would attend Sunday school. Daddy was a head waiter at the Holly Hotel for 40 years, who worked seven days a week. Breakfast at seven, lunch at noon, home at 2 p.m. to rest until supper time. We had very little family time with him. He was gone when we got up and in bed when, we, when he was through at the, uh, night. <clears throat> in the afternoon, we had to be quiet so he could rest up for the evening shift. Believe it or not, we learned a lot from his habits 
of steady work, steady work ethic, a sense of responsibility, and dedication to the work at hand. Loyalty to his extended family exhibits by his return to Saginaw, Michigan, with his family in tow every summer. I recall only once that Dad came home on Thanksgiving Day to have dinner with us. We had July 4th picnics on our large screen in back porch. Without him, I had quite a bit of resentment about not having a daddy on holidays or Sundays until Mother told me that he made more money on holidays than he did on all the other days of the year put together. That, that's why he was able to offer college. Hmm? College education. I lost it somewhere. To all of his, his children. An education, expansion of education to eight children. Education was super important to our family. <clears throat> it's part of the reason we lived in a nice neighborhood in a well-built bungalow with hardwood floors, a garage with a driveway, a backyard with a cherry tree. Our first playmates were white. One of my most vivid memories is about having to separate when we started school. Of course, our paths were not as close for years. About 30 years ago, a white lady walked up to me in a department store downtown and practically shouted, Ann! And I, and I have not heard from or seen her since. Her name and face were imprinted in my mind between then better than people I knew well in college or in the workforce. When we were old enough to venture into the next block and around the corner, when other American, African American families lived, where the other American families lived, <coughs> winner of contest for elo eloquent expression of all this but that's what this is, I just read, of the conquest of an expression of Charleston childhood, small town living. I love Charleston. I see the football fan, fans streaming past our Hansford Street house. I hear victory shouts, smell concession stands, stumble again on hillsides looking into Lately Field. Sleds swished me down Thompson Street. Coming from vacation Bible school, I hide from noon suns in the Broad Street B and O. <clears throat> My mind walks railroad ties to school, makes private tours of Capitol buildings, or romps at Ruffner Park with Tittle. We used to shop for Margaret and Bobby. On our porch, Albert keeps telling George, "No, not Daddy," until the blue DeSoto appears. Junie reads. Mother's souls, love overflows. And that's the uh, first part of it. <clears throat> Do I have to read it? That's it. And we have some photographs that if I can... <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Get this to go. Go along with her story. And I will go ahead and explain that this is the house that they grew up on Hansford Street. Um, which is by staying in a place at Lake and Field, and they had a driveway and uh, a garage. Up at the top were two of her brothers, and they're standing on the running board of a car. I couldn't find a photo of a car from that age, but I did find them standing on the running board, and that's what that would look like. Um, this house in the middle is their house on Piedmont Road, when they moved to Piedmont Road, and I showed photos here of that stone wall that used to be on Piedmont Road on that side. And up here on the right hand, upper right hand corner, is Piedmont Road looking toward uh, Morris Street where Doc Harris's uh, store was. Uh, and all of Mom's 
siblings. There was eight of them. They kind of grew up together. And this is Mom and Tittle, as she mentions in her narrative, uh, her sister Gertrude. This, way. this is an article that she had in her archives that was from 1985 that talked about the heyday of the Holly Hotel, which is where her father was the head waiter for 40 years. And this is my grandfather, or her father, here and here, and up top there. On the left-hand side, there's a picture of a huge Christmas tree that they used to have in their lobby every year at the Holly Hotel, and that was the, that was the place to be in Charleston at that time. This is uh, my mother's grandfather, uh, Bill Hill. He was a porter for the railroad. So he had a lot of stories and, and uh, a lot of things to offer as far as stories. And he's working on the car here. This is uh, a little bit later, but they're working on the car here and there in the driveway at the house on Hansford Street. And the parades and the Garnet High School. This is a Garnet High School band. Um, who were also in the parades that she discussed at uh, Lately Field. And this is a photograph of my mother and father at their high school prom. <laughs> and I showed this picture to illustrate that they wore clothes then. <laughs> now when you go to the prom, the girls have little or nothing on, or, or you know, something, and they have to have the the uh, limousine or the uh, chauffeur to take them to the prom, but they they just went to the prom. Uh, they were clothed. <laughs> they danced. And you see, they were dancing. They weren't doing anything they shouldn't be doing. And it's just a, a big change from that time to this time. And this is Miss Garnet, who happens to be my mother's baby sister, Margaret at that time, but this showed that they had things going on. The school offered social um, things for them to do, and uh, I had a good time with that. And I know I've heard and heard and heard that Garnet High School was a place to be. And I, I understand that all of y'all feel like that. <laughs> now this is my mother at Bluefield State, and this is her homecoming course. This is my mother here. And these were the lady who were um, in her homecoming court uh, at that time, because she, when she left, uh, graduated from Garnet, she went to Bluefield State. And there's a graduation photo of her uh, there from Bluefield. And then after that, uh, her and my dad decided to get married. <laughs> so I was looking at this, and it was around the time of the royal wedding. And, um, England. And I said, you know, they had all of that wonderful, big, huge pomp and circumstance for that wonderful wedding that they had there. And they just wanted to be married. And so the people who were there, there weren't uh, million, 2 million, 3 million viewers. There was my mom and dad, my uncle Richard, who was dad's best man, my mom's best friend Opal and Opal's husband, um, George Coates, that was actually killed in the Woolworth fire. And was that Lydia? Yeah. That? Okay, Lydia up there. The lady in the middle, that's Granny. That's my mother's mother. And Uncle George, <laughs> her, her brother. And that's who was there at their wedding. Other social things they did. They didn't have televisions and Xbox and, and um, you know, all the, the video games and things that the kids have now. So they did social events. And this is a picture of a Tom Thumb wedding that was uh, produced during that era. Uh, I don't know if anyone recognizes any of the children on there. I know she had some other photos of Tom Thumb weddings. I did recognize some of the people, but if you can't see, the bride and groom are right here. And I thought that was awful cute, just to show what type of social things that they did to keep busy and to stay out the streets. This is also another social event where the AKAs put on a fashion show. 
And uh, okay, there's my mother again, right here. Uh, uh, they put on a fashion show, and I'm sorry, I don't recall what year this was, but this was in a newspaper, and that's why some of these are kind of faded, because they're newspaper clippings. This is from Mother's Archives. She had a great uncle, A.G. Brown, who was a photographer, and my grandmother, her mother, kept all those photos that he took. And this is the baseball team from West Virginia State College at that time. 1900-1910 uh, circa is when this photograph was taken. And, my, and her great uncle, A.G. Brown, is the one of a right. He also developed, um, drew up the plans for some buildings in Charleston. And since this was about her growing up, I didn't show those. But this is a photograph of her. She is, um, she was interviewed because she had been chosen to be on a panel regarding African American history at WVU. And they came to the house and interviewed her for uh, the article regarding this, um, this event that took place. I think Uncle Bobby went with her. And they had a, a great um, convocation in Morgantown at that time. This would have been about 2005 this happened. And last but not least, this is when she won a contest for talking about her hometown, Charleston, West Virginia. And the last thing that she read is from that newspaper clipping that said, I left Charleston. I see the football fans streaming past our Hansford Street home. I hear victory shouts, smell concession stands, stumble again on the hillside looking at Lately Field. You know, the hillside above Lately Field, that at that time was called Hoover Stadium because you could go up there and watch the games for free because they weren't allowed in Lately Field. So they went to Hoover Stadium to watch the game. Uh, Sled swoosh past me down Thompson Street, coming from Vacation Bible School. I hear from noon suns in the Broad Street B and O Railroad. My mind walks railroad ties, making private tours of Capitol buildings or walks at Ruffner Park with Tittle. And you saw Tittle. When we shop for Margaret and Bobby, we Easter shop for Margaret and Bobby. On our porch, Albert keeps telling George, "No, not that." Until the blue DeSoto appears. Junie reads, Junie's another brother. Junie reads, Mother Sews, and Love Overflows. This is what she wrote to win this contest. And I wanted to be sure that we were aware of that. Everything that she read, I was able to pick up from her papers. She had written all this before. And all I did was redo it for her so she could read it. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, but I'm the helper. So I know all these stories <laughs> and everything. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed the presentation today. Um, I did want to mention during my um, introduction, she has several other awards, accolades, and various different things that she has done. I did not want to go through all that again. A lot of that was in the information that was sent out regarding this program. If you have any questions, we'll open the floor up now for any questions regarding that. And we appreciate your time and attention, and thank you for coming. speaker series <clears throat> over the next four months <clears throat> have been uh, West Virginia State University, 
Fifth Third Bank, MVB Bank, and Appalachian Power. <clears throat> I want to thank them for contributing to the Block Speaker Series. The project that we have going on with regards to historic significance of the Kanawha Valley, <clears throat> individuals who have contributed tremendously to that history for the Block Speaker Series that began in 2014. <clears throat> Our guests are highlighted on the website. West Virginia Center for African American Art and Culture. And as I said, we will be putting on another speaker series program uh, the last Thursday of June. Mr. Ed Hargrove will be our guest. And finally, I'd like to again say thank you to Ms. Gilbert. Possibly thank you, Mr. Randall, for their tremendous book, The Black Past, that our organization has partnered with Western New State to reprint the book. It's available for $25 if you'd like to get a copy of it. You can talk to anyone who is with the organization. I'd like for our organization members, if you're here tonight, to please stand. I saw one of you, Ms. Clo. Will you stand for a second, please? <laughs> Mike Jones or Tony Lee or Mr. Richard Wolf, would you stand please? These have been individuals who have helped me and the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Get to where we are as a as an organization. <clears throat> as executive director of the organization. I've come to realize that I don't have to be the smartest person in the room. I don't have to be the leader of the projects. There are capable individuals who are within the organization to help us get to where we want to be. And I ask questions, I take their advice to do things with regard to the organization and where we are now. I want to publicly thank them for <laughs> allowing me to be who I can be in the office and uh, helping me make the decisions that are made. We have a lot more to do with regards to the organization and I want to ask your help in moving it forward. As I said our, in the article that we saw on Tuesday, our ultimate dream is to get a building to create a museum setting for the Charleston, West Virginia area, and put this history in it, put your history in it, because as I've said in the past to the Black High School Hall of Fame members, <clears throat> that when you start to build a house, you first have to have a foundation. Everything starts with the foundation. The West Virginia Center for African American Art and Culture and Anthony Kinzer couldn't do nothing without a foundation, which you, including Ms. Gilmer, laid for me to build upon. And I thank you for it, and I'll continue thanking you for it because we have a bigger house to build. Historic house, <clears throat> historical house with everybody's history in it. And I'm loving every minute of it. I want to thank the West Virginia uh, Archives and History for their cooperation, their staff, helping the Block Speaker Series get to where it is now. The relationship is continuing to get better, and I want to strengthen it by uh, inviting you all back next month, the last Thursday of June, to see Mr. Ed Hargrove deliver his tremendous message with regards to his life as a son of a Tuskegee Airman that coincidentally began in West Virginia State. Mm -hmm. So we still have a connection wherever we go. Help me make it grow, help me move it forward. Uh, again, thank you very much for coming, and look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you.
have a gift for Ms. Gilbert that if you'd like to take her out for dinner at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. completed postgraduate work at West Virginia State College and the College of Graduate Studies for Certification and Enrichment and taught English for six years at Sissonville High School, substituted for 10 years and then taught at Carver Career Center for three years and was devoted wife to her husband, Reverend Paul Kilmer, a loving mother of five children, proud grandmother of 21, grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren and two great-great-grandchildren. And she was co-author with James Randall of the book Black Pass. She was a member of the Special Committee for the West Virginia Women's Commission and wrote some of the entries in the commission's book, A Sampling of West Virginia African American Women of Distinction. And whereas Anna Elizabeth Evans Gilbert has been awarded the West Virginia Cultural Center History Hero Award, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Living the Dream Award, the West Virginia Women's Commission Unsung Hero Award, and the West Virginia Black School Sports and Academic Hall of Fame Historian and Legend Award. And she's a charter member of the Henry Highland Garland Foundation and was an advisor in preserving the African American Baptist Church and reconstructing Booker T. Washington's boyhead, boyhood cabin mm -hmm. in Baldwin, West Virginia. And whereas Anna Elizabeth Evans is a caring and giving person and her dedication and commitment to her family, friends, community, and career has been outstanding, an outstanding example to us all. Mm -hmm. And now, therefore, mm -hmm. I, Jim Justice, Governor of the Great State of West Virginia, do hereby bestow upon Anna Elizabeth Evans Gilmer this certificate of recognition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.